before your presence, O oh God. I pray your anointing, O oh God, to flow down upon us, Lord. We cannot do anything of ourselves. We're looking to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, come in your own special way today. Hallelujah. Touch our hearts today, Lord. Heal us today, Lord. Strengthen us today, O oh God. Mighty Father, we bless you. We thank you for your presence. Oh God, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your grace this morning. Without your grace, we are nothing, Lord. We cannot do it, Jesus. But we rely upon you, Lord. We trust in the living God. We trust in your mercies today. Mighty God, Spirit of the Lord, welcome in this place. Welcome at the table that we sit today to break this bread of life. And minister to us grace today, minister to us understanding, minister us to, to us knowledge and wisdom in your word today, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, I, I thank you for so, so much grace and so much love. We thank you for your, your mercies towards us, oh God. We thank you for waking us up in our right minds again today. We thank you, oh God, for giving us your peace. We thank you, God, for giving us your joy. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I give you all the honor and all the glory this morning. I thank you for being real to us, Lord. Mighty God, you are real, oh, God. Hallelujah. And you are a present help in the time of trouble, Lord. You are our Savior. You are our battle axe. Oh, mighty God, we trust confidently in you hallelujah hallelujah lord today i lift up your word before you god as we're about to read lord bless our understanding bless us oh god open unto us the floodgates of heaven pour out your wisdom upon us oh lord in the mighty name of jesus more of you lord more of you oh god Mighty God, the more I know you, the more I want to know. Hallelujah, I want more of you. And we know you through your word, God. Therefore, make yourself known to us. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Welcome one and all as you come, guys, to Bible Jive with Jeff. We are still going through the book of Acts, and we are going to be starting, continuing today from chapter 18 and 19 today. Mighty God, we are going through quite, you know, uh, rapidly. We do have about 20, let me see. We have about 27 or 28 chapters, 27 chapters in the book of Acts. 28 chapters in the book of Acts. And so we are now at chapter 18, which we're going to be doing 18 and 19 today. So I want to welcome one and all. Those of you who have been on here and who are familiar with this platform, welcome. Everyone, you're welcome. Please feel free to make your comments, to ask your questions. Amen. And um, all I ask is for respect. Amen. In the name of Jesus, as we will be respectful as well. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know Jesus to be God manifested in flesh. I believe him to be our savior. The one that God says that he is the one that is able to save us. Amen. Body and soul. Mighty God. And so we were reading in the book of Acts yesterday and it talks about Jesus and it talks that it says that for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we are not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's devices. And the times of this ignorance, the time when people used to think that God or the Godhead was some form of gold or silver or stone and idols. They were worshiping idols. It says there was a time when God would wink at this ignorance. Amen? Wink at it like, hmm. But he wouldn't actually 
punished for it. But now, it says here, now commandeth all men everywhere. God now commands all men everywhere to repent. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. We talked about that yesterday. By that man. Who is he going to judge the world by? By that man whom he hath ordained. Amen. That's His name is Jesus. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. So because Jesus, God rose Jesus from the dead. We know that we also have an assurance in him. That when we die, if we die in Christ, meaning our faith is planted in Christ and his finished work, then we too shall be resurrected. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. There's still mockers today. Others said, he, we will hear thee again of this matter. That means come later. Talk to us another time. But right now, we ain't got the time for you. We'll hear you again about this matter. So Paul departed from them, from among them, howbeit certain men clave unto him. Thank God for those that will believe the word and cleave to the living God. Some clave unto him and believed, among the which was Dionys, Dionys, Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So now we're in chapter 18. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you guys as you come. Mighty God, we give all praise to the Lord this morning. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of blood, washed, born of his spirit and washed in his blood. That's who we are. We have been made sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are no more, um, we're no more strangers amen or sinners but we are now of the family of god because of what jesus did for us on calvary's cross he died that we might have life and have it more abundantly and now he is risen y'all he is risen christ is alive and he is well he is risen in our hearts today and we will continue to praise and to magnify and to glorify his holy name so welcome, welcome one and all as you come. I know it's Saturday and everybody is probably busy doing whatever they want to do today. But I'm here in Jesus' name and the Holy Spirit is here and we are going to continue with our reading this morning. God bless you guys. So chapter 18 of Acts says, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, Pontus lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. So we have Aquila and Priscilla. Aquila was the man and he came with his wife Priscilla. Because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought for by their occupation, they were tent makers. So this gentleman was a tent maker himself. So he stayed with Paul in them. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. So this man came and was reasoning about the law and the, about the, the scriptures. Every Sabbath, he would go and have conversations about the word of God. And so was persuading Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit. So Paul, now being motivated by the Holy Spirit, felt within his spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. Amen. This is the big debate that everybody is trying today not to accept the person of Jesus Christ, Jesus as being the Christ, the Messiah. The one that was prophesied in the Old Testament that they, that the Jews are looking for. And some of them are still looking and hoping that their, their Christ, their Messiah is coming. Problem is that he's already come. Uh, he came already and they missed it. Amen. They missed it. And so between Gentiles and Jews, they were 
he they crucified they 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 they, they rejected Christ and had him crucified amen and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed he shook his raiment and said unto them your blood be upon your own heads i am clean from henceforth i will go unto the gentiles so we have Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia unto Paul. Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And so they testified to the Jews that Jesus is Christ. And of course, they don't want to hear it. Just like a lot of people today don't want to hear the truth of Jesus Christ. So what they did, they began to um, oppose them and they blasphemed Amen. That holy name. And they shook. The, and so he, Paul, shook off his garment. Amen. A against them. Shook his raiment and said unto them, your blood be upon your own heads. You reject Christ. You are going to pay the penalty for yourself. He says, I am clean. Why does he say that? Because he did his part. He told them. So if we do our part, we will not be guilty of the blood of others when judgment comes. We, that we have done our part to tell somebody about Jesus, to pass the word on. Jesus is the Christ. You need to get saved. You need to repent of your sins. You need to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And so we who do our part, we can say like Paul, I am clean. From henceforth, he says, I will go to the Gentiles. So when these sect of people didn't want to accept the truth, He's not going to stay there and hit them over the head with a two by four tell and force God, their, God down their throats. We tell you the truth. You reject it. We move on to the next people and the next person who wants to hear it. Amen. And who will accept it. And so he departed thence, entered into a certain man's house named Justus, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. So this man, Justus, was a worshiper of the Almighty God. His house was pretty much close to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. So as they walk around and taught the word of God, some people heard and some people received and some people would be believers and, and then be baptized. Okay. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, he be not afraid, he said to Paul, but speak, be not afraid, but speak, even though they don't want to hear it, tell them anyways, be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace, good God Almighty, sometimes we want to hold our peace and shut up and don't bother tell nobody nothing about Jesus, because oh well, they don't want Jesus, you know, I'm not going to throw my, uh, my pearl before swines, they don't want Jesus, but the problem with that is that at the end of the day, we will have to give an account for the fact that we had an opportunity to witness, to tell somebody about Jesus and we didn't do it. So he says to Paul, be not afraid, but speak. Hold not thy peace. Don't shut up. Don't stop preaching the word of, of faith. Don't stop telling people about Christ. No matter how much you feel that People are not accepting it and they're mocking you and they're turning away and they're blaspheming like they're doing in our day today and they don't want Jesus. I was watching a video yesterday of some, they having their um, Satan, Satan, uh, Satanic worship services and that is in Australia and they have their satanic worship and in the process of their celebrating their 10 year satanic worship services they take the bible and they rip the pages up and throw the bible and rip the pages up and everybody's celebrating happy over that right there's a lot that's going on in the world today people are rejecting the truth and they are turning to the lie they're clinging they'd rather be worshipers of satan than worshiper of the living god but does that mean we should not tell them the truth our duty is to talk and to speak and to not hold our peace. He says, for I am with thee. So this is the angel of the Lord speaking to Paul. I am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. Keep on doing what you're doing. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to make sure that they will not be able to hurt you. They may try, but they will not 
be able to overcome or to defeat or to hurt you because what I have a lot of people mighty God I love this he says for I have much people in this city that means in this city that we live in in this country in this world that we live in where we think that the world looks like it's going to hell in a hand baskets God says I have much people in this city that means there are people in this city that I know I have already preordained for eternal life they are going to get saved they are going to receive the word of salvation we just need to keep on telling them so Paul don't give up whoever you are don't give up telling somebody even in your own family members somebody about Jesus don't give up talking about it don't give up and don't get be afraid of their faces or the fact that people might try to hurt you or might turn against you God says I'm gonna protect you because I have a lot of people God has people that that he wants to save amen that needs to hear the Word of God you think God is not giving up on us guys he does not give up on us although the world look like it looks like it's going to hell in a handbasket and people are going their own way and doing whatever they want God has not given up on this world not yet he has not given up that's why the church is still here bless the Lord <clears throat> sorry that's why the church is still here and that's why there's people that is still been given the mandate to carry the message of salvation to carry this good news to the of the kingdom to other people because souls are to be saved amen bless the Lord and so he continued there a year and six months teaching the Word of God among them Paul kept going there he stood he stayed there about six months right and he was teaching a year and six months rather teaching the word of God among them and when Gallio Gallio was the deputy of Achaia the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat so now Paul is being brought up to judgment amen saying this fellow persuades men to worship God contrary to the law so they're like, this fellow is trying to get men to serve God and to worship God, but not according to the law, right? And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O you Jews, reason what that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it. For I will be no judge of such matters. And he drave them from the judgment seat. So Gallio was like, get out of my court. Get out of my court. Because this situation here, I'm not even going to touch it. I'm not going to deal with that. If this is about words, you know, if, if this this if it's a question of words and names and of your law, then you go deal with it yourself. Don't bring this man here. I'm, I'm not taking care of that. Then all the Greeks took um, Sosthenes the chief ruler of the synagogue and beat him before the judgment seat and Gallio cared for none of those things. So they took this man, one of the Greek, um, Greek rulers, a uh, chief ruler, and they beat him in front of the judgment seat. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while and then took his leave of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in, in, in Centuria, century, for he had a vow. So he had made a vow unto, the, unto God, and so he, he showed his head. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not. But bade them farewell saying i must by all means keep this feast i got to keep this feast that comes in jerusalem but i will return again unto you if god will and he sailed from ephesus and when he had landed at caesarea and gone up and saluted the church he went down to antioch and after he had spent some time there he departed and went over all the country of galatia and and phrygia in order 
strengthening all the disciples. So he was just going from city to city, country to country, just strengthening the disciples, preaching to them the, the word of encouragement to encourage them that they do not give up the faith that they have come to accept. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born, uh, born of at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. So now we have Apollos. He was mighty in the scriptures. That means he knew his word. He knew the Bible. And he was a mighty man in scriptures and very eloquent. Know how to speak, right? So this man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. So this man was very much a powerful man that knew the word. He was teaching the word, but the only thing he understood about baptism was the baptism of John, which is the baptism of repentance. John was, was pointing people to Jesus and saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. But when Jesus came on the scene and under Christ now, there is a different baptism right when you repent and you believe then you are baptized in water for the removal of your sins and so he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when aquila and priscilla had heard they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of god more perfectly so although he knew the scriptures he was very eloquent and he was preaching the word and he good morning my dear and he knew the scriptures yet he didn't know everything that there was to know. So every, we all need to be taught. Everybody needs somebody to teach them. It doesn't matter how much we think we know. There is always more that we can learn about the scriptures and about God. So this the, this Aquila and, Pris, and Priscilla that took him aside. Man, I know you know the scriptures. I know you're eloquent in the scriptures. I know you know how to speak and you've been doing a very good job. But let me teach you a little bit something more. Let me clear up some other stuff for you. And so they expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Now it is important to understand that this man had to walk, had to have the spirit of humility because sometimes we think we know so much that nobody can teach us anything. Although he was so eloquent and, and although he was so gifted in speech and although he had this knowledge of the scriptures, yet he was humble enough to allow them to sit and listen as they explained better for him certain parts about the, the way of God. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them with much which had believed through grace. So now he comes, and after have been taught by Priscilla and by um, Aquila, he was able to expound and to help these people now who have believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. He was able to take the scriptures, scriptures, guys, from the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Levit Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Joshua, all of those. He was able to take the Old Testament scriptures and expound to them and let them understand and point to the Jews where Jesus was to be found in all of those scriptures. This Jesus that you've been reading about in the Old Testament, this prophet that is to come is in, indeed the person, Jesus. He is the Christ, the living Christ that you await. Amen. And so it's, it's baffling to understand that even after all this, and having these scriptures and having this understanding that was being taught over the years, there's still a majority of Jews today still cling to the, the knowledge that Jesus is not the Christ and that they are still waiting for the Messiah. Amen. And so they, they have missed it because blindness, the Bible says, has happened to them. So until the fullness of the Gentiles be accomplished, until the Gentiles are fully engrafted and have been born again, blindness is still happening to Israel. But God is going to lift the blindness and remove the veil from their eyes so that they can see and recognize Jesus Christ as Messiah. And we thank God that there are many, you know, Jews today 
they that are coming to that revelation, they are now starting to get their eyes open and coming to the revelation and recognizing that indeed we have been waiting for him, but he has already come. Jesus is the Christ. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Good question. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. We've never heard of this Holy Ghost. So no, I don't think we've received it. Right? So we've not even so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. So we received the baptism of John unto repentance. Then said Paul, John verily baptized you with water of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after that is on Christ Jesus so when John was baptizing you you people he was pointing you to Jesus Christ which was the Christ is to come right and so he was telling you you must repent get ready to meet and to receive him that is to come Jesus the Christ when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. You see, they were baptized under John's baptism. John was baptizing them in preparation of Jesus Christ. But when they meet Jesus and come to understand and to recognize him as Lord and Savior, they were not then baptized in the, under the baptism of Jesus Christ because they, they, they did not hear of it. But now that they realize that Jesus is the one that John was pointing them to, John's baptism was a preparation for what the reality, which is Jesus Christ. So John says, come, let me baptize you, prepare yourself, repent to, and be ready to meet him. I'm pointing you to the one, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John does not take away the sin of the world. So John's baptism does not help you. But John's baptism was a preparation. So now when they come to the, 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 the understanding of Jesus Christ, being the Christ, being the Savior of the world, and they accept him, then they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. That's what it says here in verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Baptism is important to your salvation. Yes, it is. Because after, after you believe, then you should be baptized. Because you're putting it. Imagine, imagine that you, 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 you meet someone and you fall in love with this person, right? You fall in love with this person. Your next step that you want to do do, if you're doing it properly, guys, your next step is to propose or marry this person, taking on the name of that person, becoming one with that person. Amen. So you, you the proper order. That's why the Bible says that the, the, the relationship that the Christ has with us is like the marriage that the, the relationship that a husband have with the wife. It's like Christ and the church right we come to christ in faith and we record we believe him that's us falling in love with him and then we are baptized but that's us taking on his name as uh, we would take on our our husband's name in marriage that's why you see so much nonsense is going on in our world they're trying to even overthrow marriage overthrow the whole concept of marriage so that people now oh i get married i don't have to take on your name i want to keep my name and all that kind of nonsense in my city that i live i i am married i can't even carry my husband's name legally women have fought to not be able to have to have to take on their husband's names but that was the the whole plan, uh, plan for 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 the marriage was supposed to be a type of Christ and the church. So when we are baptized, we take on the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When we are married, we take on our husband's name. The wife, beloved ones, takes the husband's name, and in the church, in in in, in the church, the church is is the bride of Christ and we take on the name of Jesus Christ so that's why when we are baptized we're baptized in the name of Jesus we take on his name 
And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, they, the Holy Ghost, came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So now they received the infilling of the Holy Spirit, right? It's like when you get married and after you get married, what do you do? You'd go to the honeymoon and you have some fellowship with your husband and you get impregnated by him and you carry the seed of your husband. So now we are being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that Holy Spirit of God will come upon us and they, their Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied and all the men were about 12, 12, about 12. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Every time you see the apostles preaching the word, they were not preaching finances they were not preaching you know about you know how you know positive speaking and all that nonsense that we hear today they were preaching the kingdom of God they were talking to people about Jesus about coming into that relationship with him about accepting him by faith about coming being filled with the Holy Ghost being baptized about the kingdom amen they were teaching them about the kingdom of God but when diver when diverse were at, were hardened some of the people's hearts were hardened and they believed not but spake evil of that way before the multitude he departed from them and separated the disciples disputing daily in the school of one tyrannus and this continued by the space of two years so that all they which dwelt in asia heard the word of the lord jesus both jews and greeks so for about two years, Paul continued going in and preaching. And those who don't want to believe, don't believe. And those who want to believe, believe. But at the end of the day, everybody heard the word of Jesus Christ. Today we are preaching. Today we are telling the word. Some people will come on the live and will listen and they will ridicule and they will mock and they will make nonsense comments and they will skip and move on and they will say it's foolishness and they will not believe. Others will believe and will accept and will believe and turn their hearts to God. At the end of the day, everybody will hear about Jesus. Amen. You know why that is? I've said it over and over. Nobody will ever have an excuse. On the day of judgment, yesterday we read, we read that Jesus Christ, and we read that today, that he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. So God raised Jesus from the dead. And Jesus has been given that, that power and that authority. He's going to judge the world. And he will judge in righteousness. So when he passes out his judgment, it will be right judgment. Nobody can say, no, I didn't do. When Jesus, when Jesus says that you're guilty of this, you are guilty. It's righteous judgment. Amen? And so you will be judged. So nobody will ever have an excuse to say, well, I didn't know. You know, even in our natural laws right now, you know that ignorance is not an excuse for the law. In our natural law, you cannot go to the court and say, well, I did not know. That's why I did it and get away with it. Ignorance is no excuse. I don't care if you were living in one city and then you come here and you make a, a turn on the red light. But in your city, turning on a red light is okay. But you come here and you turn on the red light when they pull you over. It's not an excuse. Because you're coming to this city, you should learn about the rules of this city. You will be ticketed. Amen? Maybe maybe you might find, you might bump into one police officer who will give you a, a warning for that moment. But when it comes to God, righteous judgment. Because that police officer may not be very righteous. He, may give, he might give you a warning and let you get away based on the fact that maybe you, you look cute that day. But then the next person who does the same thing and give him the same explanation, he will turn around and say, nope, sorry, and gives him a ticket. He's not a righteous judge, but Jesus is a righteous judge. So if you broke the law, you will have to pay. So when it comes to Jesus Christ, he is going to do righteous judgments and nobody will have an excuse to say, well, I didn't know Jesus. I'm so sorry. Depart from me. I don't know you. 
The word was preached. You received the word. You heard the word. Nobody can say I never heard them mention anything like that to me. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannius. And thus continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelled in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greek, Greeks. And God wrought special miracles in the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs. So Paul's body, guys, the, the clothes that he would wear, he could take a jacket off and cut it up into special handkerchiefs or aprons and give it out to people. And when and we see people sometimes doing this. They're getting this idea from Paul, right? Paul, God, it says God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought Unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Just his jacket, just his coat or whatever, he could cut it up and say, your, your sick cannot come to the meeting. Take this over to him and put it on, his, on him and he's going to be healed and they would get healed. Amen. Now, if God don't tell you to do that, you can try to do that. It doesn't necessarily mean it will work for you, but that was what how it worked in Paul. On in Paul, not Peter, not any one of them. I don't know if of Peter. Peter, his shadow was able to heal the sick. He just his shadow. They would bring the sick along the way, and as Peter passed along, and his shadow touched them, mighty God, his shadow would heal the sick. So everybody was given the anointing according to how the spirit distributed to them. And they operated in their own, in their, uh, in their anointing. A lot of people are trying to operate in the anointing of Paul and Peter that was never given to them. They're trying to operate in different anointing, but they're just trying to, to mimic stuff. You don't try to mimic. You have to pray and ask God and find out where, what, what God has anointed you with and work with that. Amen. Work with that. Stay in your lane. In the name of Jesus. Then certain of the vagabond Jews ex exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. So there are some people now who they were, you know, uh, exorcists. They're doing ungodly sorcery stuff. And so now when they see how Paul and them is able to use the name of Jesus and it works, they said, oh, we should try seeing if we can use the name of Jesus and get it to work for us too. So they would start, people that would come to them say that they're possessed with evil spirit, they would say, we're going to call the name of Jesus over them. So they would call the name of the Lord Jesus saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. Now, we adjure you, we are casting you out, heap of spirit. I cast you out by the name of Jesus that Paul is preaching about. Paul has a relationship with Jesus. You don't. So you don't get to use the name without having a relationship with the owner of that name. You don't have the authority to use the name of Jesus if you are not in, 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 in relationship with Jesus Christ. That is why the Bible says that in that day, there's many that's going to use the name. They're going to say, Lord, Lord, I did this in your name and I did that in your name. And he says, depart from me. I don't know you. Because you never came into relationship with me. I never had a personal relationship. You never had a personal relationship with me. You were using my name because you saw other people do it. And so you called my name over stuff. Amen. So these guys were doing the same thing. It says, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. So this guy, Sceva, he was a Jew, and he was the, one of the chief priests. And so the evil spirit answered him and said, Jesus, I know. <laughs> Paul, I know. But who are you? Can you imagine, guys? Somebody possessed with a demon and you come in the name of Jesus that this girl on TikTok is using all the day. I want to cast you out. In the name of Jesus that Paul preached, I cast you out. And the demon shouts back at you and says, hey, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. That girl on TikTok, I know her. But who are you? 
Who are you to be using this name? You understand? And so the man in whom this evil spirit was, was leaped on them. That man, the evil spirit, make him leap upon them and overcame them and pre prevailed against them, beat them up, beat them up so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. How dare you try to use the name of Jesus and you have no legal right to the name. You have no legal authority. Bible says don't take the name of the Lord in vain. You don't have any legal authority to the name. You don't have a relationship with Jesus, but you want to come. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus talking. Take the name. Do not take the name of the Lord Jesus, of the Lord God in vain. Don't use it. Sometimes I hear people out, outside and they're talking and they want to call the name of Jesus just like that, almost like, like a swear word. You don't have the right to use that name. You don't have a fellowship or a relationship with that name. And so the man on whom the spirit was leaped upon them and beat them and overcame them and prevailed against them. They ran out of the house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. The name of the Lord Jesus was magnified because they, I mean, even <laughs> that's why sometimes I, I said, you know what, when people want to go ahead and talk about Jesus on TikTok here, there's all these platforms. Oh, Jesus is not God. If you, if I'm wrong, pr prove me right. If you, if you, if you, if I'm, if I'm um, trying to prove me wrong, Jesus is that prove me wrong. And so they don't realize that they are using the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't believe in the name, but they want to put it out there. But the more people talk about it, people are still learning about Jesus. And so the name of Jesus is being magnified. When people fight down the name so much, they're trying to suppress the name. They're trying to stop us from speaking in that name. They're trying to stop us from talking about salvation and Jesus and all that. They don't care if you call any other name. Just don't talk Jesus. But the more they fight against it is the more the name of the Lord Jesus is magnified. Amen. So let them fight because they're helping to magnify that holy name. Because at the end of the day, the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. They will have to admit to the awesomeness and the magnif magnificentness of this wonderful name. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. When they come, they confess. They start to confess all their evils and all the wrongs they've been doing, all the sorcery they've been mixing up in, all the voodoo they've been performing. And they start confessing. We're going to have some folks that's going to have to confess. Amen. So many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together. It's not now these things are going on, eh? They use curious arts. They have their books that they sit around and read and chant and do all kind of foolishness. They bring the books together and, uh, and brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found 50,000 pieces of silver. That's how much the, the, the amount of money these people spend on getting these books in order to do witchcraft and sorcery instead of just choosing to accept Jesus. But now when they come to accept Jesus, they bring these things and they cast them down and burn them. Sometimes a lot of folks say they are saved and they come to the Lord and they accept Jesus, but they won't get rid of the old things. The Bible says old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So whatever you were tied to or, or wrapped up in doing that before you come to Jesus, when you come to Jesus, don't continue. The Bible says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. You must get rid of it. You must turn from it fully and burn what needs to be burned. Throw out even them clothes that you used to wear for whatever reason. Burn it. Get rid of certain things. Turn from those foolishness. Amen. Burn it and turn from it. You cannot say you come to Jesus and you are saved, but you are still sneaking out at nights to go do whatever on the street. That does not work. You cannot be sneaking down to the drug house to go get drugs. That does not work. You cannot continue in sin. 
You cannot be in the bed of fornication and still you are saved. You cannot continue. At, you, you got to turn, turn from it. Amen. Repent. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he went into Macedonia, two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and, Eph uh, and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And the same time there arose no small stir among that way, for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver sh shrines for Diana, so he made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. So he was bringing in a lot of profit with his shrines that he was building to this false god Diana, right? whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, we know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost all throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands, so he was building the false gods, and 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 and, and build, but he owns the shrine. He was building the shrines and building all these false images, right? So people come and buy their gods to go and worship in their homes or whatever. But when Paul was preaching to them, telling them these are no gods, Jesus is the way. You must turn to him. When the people believe and turn to Jesus, they get rid of the false god. Money starts going down. The profit starts diminishing. Their bottom line starts getting smaller because they were losing business. People were not running to them for false gods no more. So now they're like, wait a minute here. This man is persuading people that these be no gods which are made with hands. And this is how we get our profit. We need to do something about it. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all Asia and the world worships. So they're like all Asia and the world worships Diana. Her magnificence is going to be destroyed. All of a sudden people are not worshiping, are coming to the shrine. What? A, no. And so when they heard these saying, they were full of wrath and cried out saying, great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is, they were worshiping now even more because they don't want Diana's magnificence to go down. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not um, he would not adventure himself into the theater. They said, Paul, don't go in there. If you go in there, you're going. They're pleading with him. Do not go in there. Some therefore cried one thing and some another for the assembly was confused. Huh? And the more part knew not where, wherefore they were come together. So this was like a, a great crowd of people. Everybody screaming out something. Some saying, this some saying that confusion so that the, most of them don't even know why they're there you understand we see these kind of things sometimes people gather in these big groups and you know to 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 to, to talk about something and yet they don't have a clue they don't even know why they're there why are you serving satan why are you living the life that you're living why are you under the bondage of sin why are you out there in the world living the way you're living you don't even have a clue why you're doing it you're just joining with the crowd Everybody is doing it, so I'm doing it too. Mighty God of heaven, Jesus. Glory to God. Sometimes our young people, you they don't even it's like they're clueless. You ask them why? Why are you hooked on these drugs? Why are you living this kind of life? Why are, they don't even have a clue. 
They don't have a clue why. Because friends are doing it. They're going along with the flow. They're just going with the crowd. Beloved brethren, we cannot be like such a people. We cannot just go with the crowd. Not because this church do it that way. I'm going to do it that way. Not because everybody else in think that this, form, this thing is okay and wants to normalize sin. I must flow along with it and agree with it. I cannot in the name of Jesus Christ. I cannot not be be just like the crowd we have to be different mighty god of daniel so yes there were their confusion this is the world that we are living in my god this is the world we are living in today confusion and everybody just going along with the crowd everybody just getting on the same boat and running down the sin the the, the, the sin path of destruction living their life anyhow everybody wants to do whatever they want to do huh but the, at the end of the day as i said judgment it is appointed unto men once to die but after death comes the judgment glory be to god and so they drew alexander out of the multitude and drew the jews putting him forward and alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people but when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So they wouldn't even want to hear the man talk about Jesus. They just keep on screaming out, Great is Diana, Great is Diana. And so they were worshipping above the truth. Above the tr truth, they want to worship a lie. You want to tell them about the living way, but they want to continue with the lie. They want to worship. Don't you hear the cry today, guys? Everybody with a loud voice want to tell you how much it's okay that, you know, I, I, you know, I can't even say what I want to say on this platform. I can't even say what I want to say, but y'all know what I'm trying to say. You understand? Because people want to live any kind of dirty life. Dirty toilet life let me put it that way and then we say it's okay and i'm supposed to agree with you for whatever the foolish confusion that you're in whatever foolish thing you present to me and tell me this is it i'm supposed to agree with you the devil is a liar in the name of jesus i come against that spirit right now I come against it with all force of heaven. I come against it in the name of Jesus. That demonic spirit of confusion that's messing up young people, babies, young men, young women. God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come against that demonic spirit. We bind it in Jesus' name. We loose it out of our bloodline in the name of Jesus. We loose it from our children in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By whom they knew that he was a Jew. So they begin to cry out the more over the, the voice of the one who wants to tell them about the Jesus. So they scream out worshiping this false God. And when the, when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said... You men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshipper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? So now this, this is what they were worshipping, the great goddess Diana, false god and some image of a, of, of, that fell down from Jupiter. Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, amen, is not what we are hearing today. We're not allowed to speak against certain things. We're not allowed to say lie. This is the, a demon from hell that's possessing you, making you act like that. We're not allowed to say that. We're not allowed to say that. Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, you are to be quiet and to do nothing rashly. For you have brought hither these men, which are neither ro ro um, robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your gods. So we're not trying to rob churches and we're not trying to blaspheme your gods. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open and there are deputies, let them plead one another let them imp implead one another but if you inquire anything uh, if you inquire anything concerning their matters other matters it shall be determined in a law 
lawful assembly, for we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. So we see that this was a crowd, a crowd guy that was gathered against the men of God. Because they dare to speak in the name of Jesus. And they want you should not speak against what they believe. This, 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 this image that is being set up. This demonic worship that is being publicized and make um, normalized in our society. We're not allowed to speak against it and to call sin, sin. We're not allowed to say it is wrong. Amen. So now they, I must go along with it. I must be as confused as you. That means I'm looking at a tree and the tree tells me I'm not a tree. I'm a river and I'm supposed to say, okay, Mr. River or oh, sorry, madam or whatever river. I'm not allowed to call an apple an apple because maybe the apple feels that he's an orange. Or she's an or he, she, or whatever is an orange. I'm not allowed to talk against it. Amen? But they can put down our, our beliefs. We should not speak the name of Jesus. We, they, flog, they flog these men. They beat them. They tell them you cannot speak in the name of Jesus. Amen? Don't call the name of Jesus. We cannot speak in the truth, but anything that's a lie, it is welcomed and accepted. The blood of Jesus. We come against that right now. We come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray God that you will establish your glory and your kingdom among your people. Let us not give in to societal norms. Let us not allow ourselves to be, to be drawn away with the crowd. Following stupidity and nonsense, God. Agreeing with sin and, 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 and chaos. Mighty God, because the Bible tells me that we are the body of Christ and we are the bride of Christ. And as such, God, there is a difference that must be made between us and the world. We are not the same. Holy Ghost, mighty God, may you help your people, Lord, to understand what their position is. Mighty God, that they should truly identify with Christ. Mighty God, that they should identify with you. That our identity must be in Jesus Christ. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, we are one with you, O God. You have called us out of darkness into marvelous light. Mighty God, let us be bold about it. Let us not be afraid about it. Let us be bold to declare that we are Christ-like, that we are the children of the living God, that we are numbered, oh God Almighty, with those that are saved and that are believers in Jesus Christ, that we should walk and show forth the identity of the living God. That you will know who we are in Jesus' name. Lord God, we thank you, Lord. Let us be a lamp, oh God, that, that the world can see. Let us not put our light under a bushel, oh God. Though they may be offended at our light, God, let us shine more brightly brighter today than we have ever shone in our lives. In Jesus name. Mighty God let us be an example oh God in the name of Jesus. This darkness that we see in our world God is, been, is infiltrating every aspect of our lives, every aspect of society. My God Almighty the promotion comes God to those that are in darkness and the people of light are being kept under a bushel. But in the name of Jesus I pray Pray, God, that for you will open for us, God, the doors that we will step forward, oh God, in Jesus' name, in boldness, oh God, and be examples of the living Christ. In the name of Jesus, 
In the name of Jesus, God, I break down the strongholds right now, oh God. Father, we know, Jesus, that you are in charge, that you are going to judge this world. As you have done in the past again, you will do it again, Lord, and you will judge. And I pray that we will be right with you, God. We will come up under the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Mighty God, let us put aside every weight and every sin that easily beset us. Mighty God, every sin that, that will easily turn us aside from the truth. Let us get rid of it, God. Let us purge ourselves of all these impurities of this world. Let us purify our minds, O oh God. Wash ourselves in the blood of the Lamb. Let us cleanse our hearts, O oh God, as the word says in the book of James. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Mighty God, because Lord, we have to be one mind, one mind for God and God alone. We can't accept the world and accept Jesus at the same time. We cannot be on the side of truth and on the side of a lie at the same time. Mighty God, let us choose this day whom we will serve. Hallelujah. God be God and we serve God. If mammon be God, then we serve that. But let us choose God. Too many of us are on the fence. With our salvation. Too many of us are on the fence God. We say we are Christians. And yet my God people are finding us. Doing things God. We are being exposed God. Doing things that only the sinner. And the world. And the darkness should be doing God. We are mixing light with darkness. And it cannot continue like this. God in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you will begin to expose these lies. Expose individuals that are living that lie. That is living that lie. Expose them in the name of Jesus. But purify your bride. Purify your church. Let your people be holy even as you are holy, oh God. God. Let us be righteous even as you are righteous, O oh God. Let us live our lives unto, ho unto holiness, O oh God. And let us not live any in any way and bring shame to the, to the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I put this prayer before you. We ask for forgiveness, God. Lord God, it breaks my heart when I hear some of the things that, that, that these people will speak about Jesus. With no form of respect for your name. Oh God Almighty, they go about to make a joke. My God, to get a laugh, God, and use the name of Jesus. But the Lord Almighty, even as the crowd is shouting out the false God and worship to the false God above those who want to speak the truth to them, Lord. So our world today, they're shouting very loud, God. They're shouting very loud. They don't want us to know, my God Almighty, the truth. And they're trying to cover the truth with the lie. But Lord, we come to declare you as Lord and we declare you as truth. I declare that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. I declare that you reign supreme, O oh God. I declare it in the name of Jesus. You reign supreme, O oh God. God, and you are the true identity of the church. You are, we are found, our identity is found in you and in you alone, oh God. And so God, everything else, weed it out, God, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, and purify your church. Purify your church. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Mighty God, work a work in your people, Lord. Work a work in us, God. Jesus, have mercy, O oh God. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, God. It breaks my heart. 
and I know it breaks your heart, God, to see men and women living anyhow, ignoring the true God and turning aside to foolishness. Mighty God, have mercy. I pray in Jesus' name. God, we have, guys, we have to continue to pray. I see some stuff on TikTok that when I watch them and I don't know how they can get away with that. I don't know how. We are not allowed to use certain words on TikTok. But yet somebody can sit there and use the name of Jesus in a derogatory way. I mean, I watched a video the other day, guys. I swear to God, I have never had anything that I watch on TikTok that made me cry as much as that video. I literally had to shut my phone. I put my phone, I bawled in my house. I, I started repenting for the nation. I started repenting. I said, God, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Jesus. I'm so sorry for what they're doing to your name. I'm so sorry, Lord. It broke my heart. It breaks my heart to know that this is God Almighty and they can take the name of Jesus and just, they say things that you wonder why. How could you talk about God like that? How can you use the name of Jesus like that? How can you do it? And I said, Lord, you are so merciful. Because if it was me, I would have wiped that one out right away. I would have wiped them out. I was so angry. I was so hurt. I, I mean... I don't know. This God that we serve is truly, truly marvelous loving, kind, forgiving. For somebody to take the name of Jesus and to use it in such a derogatory term. I can't even repeat it to y'all because if I repeat it, I'm just going to bawl my head off again. I tell you, I hurt. I could feel the Holy Spirit. And, I, and, and in that moment, guys, I understood what the Bible meant when it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. I understood that verse more than I have ever understood it before. Because I started, my heart broke and I couldn't stop crying and I couldn't stop asking God to forgive us as a nation, to forgive us. I said, God, please, I'm so sorry. I just kept saying, I'm sorry. I felt like I sinned. I felt like I broke God's heart. Even the fact that I listened to that video, I felt like I broke his heart. Oh, Jesus. Mighty God. I don't know. We're not allowed to call people by their proper pronouns, guys. Unless if they tell us what they want to be called, we're supposed to call them that or we're in trouble. Yet you can take the name of Jesus and mess it up and talk and speak so derogatorily against the name of Jesus. There were days back when we, if, if my Bible fell to the ground, I would feel literal pain. Like I felt like somebody hit me. If we found a Bible leaf flying in the wind we would run after it and pick it up and straighten it out and make sure we put it up somewhere safe i don't know if you guys remember those times when you were younger when the word of god was so precious i have bible but if i see a bible leaf i couldn't believe it it would be like how can somebody have the and i would go find it and straighten it out and, and i would read that bible leaf over and over and turn it over and read it and keep it safe and now people can stand up and rip up a Bible at the applause of other people talking about you're worshiping Satan. 
Yes. And then when sickness come upon you, you say, why God did that to me? You never will blame Satan for your cancers. You will never blame Satan when your children are, are, are die or something happen. It's always God. But you don't believe in him until there is a problem in your life. He doesn't exist for you until there is a problem in your life. All of a sudden, Jesus. And all of a sudden, that's why you're mad at God. Because look what he did. You've been mad all your life. You were born mad. Amen. Born in sin, shaped in iniquity. And grow up with, with all kind of mess in your heart. And now you blame God for your problems. When Jesus became the solution for all of our problems, you refuse the solution and then you blame the God of heaven for your problems to your solution. Yeah, the prop for you for the for the for the solution. You blame God. Even though He has provided you an answer, He provided you the solution. Mighty God. I'm gonna stop here today. We need to pray for our nation. God help me. God help me. God help us all. Because when we look around and see what's going on, you cannot look in this world and tell me that you don't know that God is real. And that Satan is at work. And that everything that you see that Satan is doing is fighting against the true and living God. And that it's the name of Jesus that is the most problem and trouble to the kingdom of darkness. You can't tell me that you don't believe that Jesus is Lord. When Satan himself believes and is trembling in his boot and trying everything to bring disrepute to that name. Trying everything to get people not to accept the name of Jesus. They, I mean, they will, they will applaud you and lift you up high if you get up and say, I have just decided that I am going to be Muslim. All of a sudden, you can be, be anything you want. Anything you declare yourself that you want to be. Oh, we will provide you help to become it anyways. Just don't talk about being a Christian. Don't talk about being a child of the living God and serving Jesus. Because the moment you want to serve Jesus, Satan says, what? I can't lose another one. And so all hell is stirred. If I never believe that Jesus is God, when I see how Satan kicking up rumpus, as they would say in Jamaica, I'm a kick up rumpus. I'm a go mad, I'm a go crazy. At the name of Jesus, then I know that Jesus is real. Eh? I know that the name Jesus is powerful. And I know that that's the name, is the, 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 the saving name. Because Satan knows that Confucius or confusion, whoever he is, cannot save you. Muhammad and Allah cannot save you. I don't care if you say Allah means God. It's not the God of heaven. Because when, you're, when your religion refuses and rejects the son of the living God, you cannot tell me that you're serving the living God. Because the same Bible here tells me that if you refuse the son, you refuse the father also. If you, re if you receive the son, you receive the father. If you reject the son, you reject the father. So don't tell me we are serving the same God. Because if we were, we would be on the same train going in the same direction. But I promise you, we are not anywhere on the same train line. We are not on the same train. We are not heading in the same direction. You understand? Because people want you to believe their lie. It looked like. It sound like we are the same. We believe in Jesus. We just know he didn't die and he didn't raise. Why? Because if he died, then Satan is defeated. And if he raised, then oh my God, my victory is sure. So we cannot believe that. 
Well, let me tell you something. I thank God for faith. I'm sorry, guys. I get very Jamaican when I get very passionate about this thing. Because I love the Lord. I love him. I love the Lord. Some days I have to ask God if I, God, I know I say it all the time, but you search me, Lord. Do I truly love you the way I feel like I do? Or do I, tr do I truly love you? Do I truly believe the way that I know I need to believe? Because if trials come right now, if they burst my front door right now with guns, machine guns and stuff and say, if you don't say, stop saying, Jesus, we are going to do this and that to you, what would I do? You know what I would do, guys? I would look right up to heaven and I would say, Jesus. Because I am not afraid. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Now, when I'm at the work and stuff, I try my best to respect their workplace. I try my best not to, you know, go there and say I'm preaching Jesus in, 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 their, in their place and stuff. I talk to individuals who wants to know about Jesus. And if somebody say, pray for me, I pray. Or if they're sick, I say, do you want me to pray for you? I, I believe in Jesus. And if they say yes, I will pray for them. But I am not out there saying, okay, when we have to go, make sure. I, I don't do that because I'm in their, in their workplace. But they can never ever get me to reject Jesus. Nobody can. If that means leaving the job, it's gone. If that means that they want to do anything to me, they can do it. I'm sold out for Christ. Amen? 100% I'm sold out for Christ. I will never ever backslide or give up on Jesus. My faith cannot be shaken when it comes to Jesus Christ, Lord of heaven and earth. My faith cannot be shaken. And if somebody was to come and present me with another doctrine and say, you know what? As a matter of fact, this is the reality and this is the truth. I will take Jesus over anything else. And if hell is my destination from choosing Jesus, then hell shall be my destination. That's how sure I am. If Hell, if Jesus is going to lead me to hell, I will go straight to hell with Jesus. I hear the scripture says, Though I make my bed in hell, he is there. If I take the wings of the morning and I fly to the, the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. David says it is better for me to spend you know, a day in your courts, Lord, than a thousand hell elsewhere. I would rather spend if it even just one day with the Lord than to go and spend a thousand days in paradise or anywhere else where Jesus is not. I don't care about the vacations of this world. Give me a thousand day in the best on the best resort or give me one day with Jesus. I see them doing TikTok things like that where they ask people five minutes with God, with Jesus, or $5,000. And the people would say $5,000. But the, ch the child of God, a Christian, would say, I'll take five minutes with Jesus. You understand? Because people don't understand the value of their salvation. For you to say $5,000, what is $5,000? What is $5,000? Even if you were to say to them, would you rather get $5,000 or get to see, to spend one, um, five minutes with King David, King David of old. You know, people would say they would rather see King David. They would actually want to see and spend five minutes with King David or King Solomon, the wisest of all, right? They would say they would want to spend five minutes with King Solomon as opposed to having $5. Because the amount of wisdom King Solomon would be able to give you would be able to make you millions more than just 5000 right? But yet you have people will take $5,000 instead of spending five minutes with Jesus. Eternal life, y'all. Amen? Anyway, that's it. That's the end of today's um, 
scriptures and um, we read up to chapter 20, 19 and 20 today. Tomorrow will be, not tomorrow, but Monday will be starting with 21. So God bless you guys. Anybody have any comments, anything you want to ask or say? What? You see? By the way, guys, let me, oh, I'm giving a testimony right now. Because I've been talking to you guys about as I'm reading these scriptures and praying and believing God. I'm trusting God for healing from lactose um, intolerance and gluten intolerance and for healing me from my light sensitivity and whatever. And I tell you, I've been eating gluten. I've been eating gluten and I've been feeling great. Honestly, I don't know what's, what's going on. I just know that I believe God is, is, is touching my body as I'm continually reading the scriptures and believing that. And I'm actually feeling great. I eat gluten. Even last night, I had a bowl of gluten cereal. These gluten cereals my husband have here have been sitting there for so long for him. And I have to buy special cereal that says gluten-free, milk, lactose-free, everything free. And I took, I took a bowl and ate cereal, regular cereal. I've been eating that and I've been feeling great. My energy is great. I don't even realize that I'm talking to you. I'm saying this right now because honestly, I'm talking to you guys. I didn't even realize I took off my glasses. Where have you heard that? That I'm taking off glasses in the front of the window, light right there, light screens in front of me. And I'm taking off my glasses and I'm still seeing my screen and I'm still able to read from the scriptures right now. I Normally I can't even see any word in the Bible without this pair of glasses on. I am seeing it right now. Let me, let me read something to you guys. Let me read. It says, Sor um, Sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more, and they accompanied him unto the ship. I'm able to read that in Jesus name. Normally I cannot. And I didn't even realize I'm talking to you guys and took off my glasses. Normally I don't ever do that. I don't ever do that. I'm wondering why my, why my glasses sitting on my Bible? Because I, and sometimes I'm walking around the house. Normally my windows, I have to draw the drapes. Everything is black out in my house, right? And my husband says to me this morning, honey, I noticed that you've been opening up the, uh, <laughs> the drapes in the mornings. And I said, yes, because I'm feeling so much better. The light sensitivity is going away. I'm opening drapes. I'm walking around without glasses. Sometimes I'm like, where are my glasses? Oh my God, when was the last time I had my glasses on? God is doing a quick work in my body. So I believe God and I thank him. So I will continue to speak and to believe God for my healing, that everything is working for my good and in my favor. All things are working for me in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm praying that you guys will continue. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know who this person is, is thinking they are, but God bless you for your comment. Anyways, Jesus, we thank you. So yeah, the Lord is my my healer the lord is my keeper he is a shade upon my right hand you know no nothing that is formed against me shall ever prosper in the mighty name of jesus god bless you guys and i'm gonna go right now so enjoy your day and we will talk again on monday so this user who is under hiding under the name user something something here saying about feeling something about your feeling that bible is black people enemy i don't know what that means you're a black person you have enemy and your enemy is the bible my my the bible is my friend amen it's been my friend for a very many years now and i've had you know i don't need friends i need i need my bible my bible is good amen thank you jesus it it, it speaks to me it heals me it strengthens me mighty god mighty god where which other book can you read and you open the book and read a word and get deliverance just like that you can't find it nowhere else man the word of god is powerful it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Let us just continue in faith. Those of you who are believers, don't give up on faith. Amen? Don't give up on Jesus. Continue in faith and let God keep you in all your way. God bless you guys. I'm going to end here. God bless you. God bless you, my auntie. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.